the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. Practical Psychology for Today. Featuring the works of Idris Shah, voiced by David Alt. Welcome to the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. In this edition of the podcast, we will hear selections from the pleasantries of the incredible Mullah Nasruddin by Idris Shah. This audio has been made available by the Idris Shah Foundation. The Chickens Hardly anyone could understand Nasruddin, because sometimes he snatched victory from defeat, sometimes things seemed to go astray because of his blundering. But there was a rumour that he was living on a different plane from others, and one day a young man decided to watch him to see how he managed to survive at all, and whether anything could be learned from him. He followed Nasruddin to a river bank and saw him sit down under a tree. The mullah suddenly stretched out his hand, and a cake appeared in it, which he ate. He did this three times. Then he put his hand out again, picked up a goblet, and drank deeply. The youth, unable to contain himself, rushed up to Nasruddin and caught hold of him. "'Tell me how you do these wonderful things, and I will do anything you ask,' he said. "'I will do that,' said Nasruddin. "'But first you have to get into the right state of mind. Then time and space have no meaning, and you can be reaching out to the Sultan's Chamberlain to hand you sweetmeats. There is only one proviso.' "'I accept it,' shouted the young man. You will have to follow my way. Tell me about it. I can only tell you one thing at a time. Do you want the easy exercise or the difficult one? I will take the difficult one. This is your first mistake. You have to start with the easy one, but now you cannot, for you have chosen. The difficult one is this. Make a hole in your fence so that your chickens can get into your neighbour's garden to peck large enough for that. But it must also be so small that your neighbour's chickens cannot get into your own garden to feed themselves. The young man was never able to work this one out, and so he never became a disciple of Nasruddin. But when he told people about what Nasruddin could do, they thought that he was mad. This is a good start, said Nasruddin. One day you will find a teacher. Prayer is better than sleep. As soon as he had intoned the call to prayer from his minaret, the mullah was seen rushing away from the mosque. Someone shouted, Where are you going, Nasruddin? The mullah yelled back, That was the most penetrating call I have ever given. I'm going as far away as I can to see at what distance it can be heard. What is to be? A farmer asked Nasruddin whether his olives would bear in that year. They will bear, said the mullah. How do you know? I just know, that is all. Later the same man saw Nasruddin trotting his donkey along a seashore, looking for driftwood. There is no wood here, mullah, I have looked, he called out. Hours later the same man saw Nasruddin wending his way home, tired out, still without fuel. You are a man of perception who can tell whether an olive tree will bear or not. Why can't you tell whether there is wood on a seashore? I know what must be, said Nasruddin, but I do not know what may be. The Logician Nasruddin walked into a village and stood on a chair in the marketplace. When a crowd had collected, he declaimed, No, O people, that the air here is similar to the air above my own village. What makes you think so? someone shouted. Because I can see the same number of stars here as I can when I am there.
once bitten. A man borrowed some money from Nazruddin. The mullah thought that he would never get it back, but gave the money nevertheless. Much to his surprise, the loan was promptly repaid. Nazruddin brooded. Some time later, the same man asked for the loan of a further sum, saying, You know my credit is good, I have repaid you in the past. Not this time, you scoundrel, roared Nasruddin. You deceived me the last time when I thought you would not return the money. You won't get away with it a second time. Good News In the East, people who bring good news are always rewarded, and this is considered a very important custom, never broken. One day, Mullah Nasruddin, delighted at the birth of a son, arrived in the marketplace and started shouting, Gather around! Good news! What is it, Mullah? Nasruddin waited until everyone was present, then cried, O oh, people! Make a collection for the bringer of good news! News for every single one of you! This is the news! Your Mullah has been blessed with a son! The Dog at His Feet Mullah Nasruddin often wandered in graveyards, thinking about life and death. One day he was pursuing this uplifting activity, when he saw a fierce-looking dog crouch near one of the tombs. Outraged at this defilement, he took up a stick and waved it at the dog, but it merely growled and seemed about to spring at him. The mullah was not one to expose himself to danger if it could be avoided. Sit there by all means, he said reassuringly to the hound, for there is no objection so long as you crouch at the dead man's feet. Facts are facts. When the mullah was made a cadi, or magistrate, he was faced with a difficult problem. In an assault case, the plaintiff said that the defendant had bitten his ear. The defence was that the plaintiff had bitten it himself. This is a clear conflict of evidence, because there are no witnesses, said the mullah. There is only one way to decide this. I therefore adjourn the court for half an hour. He went into a room attached to the courthouse, and spent the time trying to bite his own ear. Every time he tried, he lost his balance and fell over, bruising his head. When the court reassembled, the mullah said, Examine the head of the plaintiff. If it is bruised, he bit his own ear, and I find for the defendant. If, on the other hand, there is no bruise, the other man bit his ear, and that is assault. Not to be taken away I will instruct you in metaphysics, said Nasruddin to a neighbour in whom he saw a spark of understanding, albeit a small one. Oh, I should be delighted, said the man. Come to my house any time and talk to me. Nasruddin realised that the man was thinking that mystical knowledge could be transmitted entirely by word of mouth. He said no more. A few days later the neighbour called the mullah from his roof. Nasruddin, I want your help to blow my fire. The charcoal is going out. Uh, certainly, said Nasruddin. My breath is at your disposal. Come over here and you can have as much of it as you can carry away. Not my business to know. Nasruddin's donkey was stolen. He immediately went to the police. Mullah, said the chief of police, this is serious. We will spare no effort to get your donkey back. After all, you are rather famous. Now begin at the beginning and tell me how it happened. As I was not there when it happened, I can hardly tell you, can I? said Nasruddin. Besides, it is not my business to know.
not as easy as it seems. A widow came to the muller's court and said, I am very poor. My young son eats a great deal of sugar. In fact, he is addicted to it. This means that I cannot make ends meet. Would the court forbid him to eat sugar, because I cannot myself enforce this request? Madam, said the muller, this problem is not as easy as it seems. Return in a week and the decision will be given after I have examined the case more thoroughly. After a week, the woman's name was again on a list of supplicants. I am sorry, Nasruddin said to her when her turn came. There will be another adjournment of this very tricky case until next week. The same thing happened for the following fortnight. At length, Nasruddin announced, The court will now give its injunction. Call the lad. The young man was brought before the mullah. Boy, thundered the magistrate, you are forbidden to eat sugar except for half an ounce a day. The woman now expressed her thanks to the mullah and begged leave to ask one question. Say on, said Nasruddin. Your worship, I am mystified as to why you did not forbid the boy to eat sugar at any of the earlier hearings. Well, said Nasruddin, I had to get myself out of the habit first, didn't I? How could I know that it would take so long? Repetitiousness Profiting by the immense reputation which Sufis have as teachers of special insight, a group of robbers settled in an abandoned monastery on a highway, pretending to be Sufi dervishes. Nasruddin and his small son were travelling on a long journey when they were espied by a lookout man among the robbers. They immediately started to carry out a rhythmic dance with a great deal of noise. As they approached, Nasruddin said to his son, Night will fall soon, and this seems to be a monastery of advanced dervishes. Let us seek their hospitality. The false dervishes welcomed them heartily and even asked the mullah to join their special exercises. These took the form of a rapid circular movement, with the repetition of phrases which were changed from time to time by the leader. Presently Nasruddin was whirling with the best of them, taking up the repetitious cries, and in a near hysterical frame of mind. Now the leader of the dervishes started to call, I give you my donkey, I give you my donkey. Obediently, Nasruddin echoed the refrain, and the tempo was increased until he fell unconscious. When he awoke with the dawn, Nasruddin found the robbers, and the donkey, gone. I thought I left you in charge of the animal, he roared at his son. Yes, father, but when one of the dervishes came and took the donkey, I ran to you, and you were shouting, I give you my donkey so often and in front of so many witnesses that I realized that you had given him away. Never miss a bargain. Nazardin had so much against his donkey that the obvious thing to do was to sell it and get another one. So he went to the marketplace found the auctioneer, and gave him the donkey to sell. When the animal came up for sale, the mullah was standing by. And the next lot, shouted the auctioneer, is this superb, unequalled, wonderful donkey. Who will start the bidding at five gold pieces? Only five for a donkey? Nasruddin was impressed. So he started the bidding. As the price mounted higher and higher, with the auctioneer singing the praises of the donkey at every bid, Nasruddin became more and more anxious to buy. The bidding finally settled down to a duel between the mullah and a farmer. At forty gold pieces, it was knocked down to Nasruddin. He paid the auctioneer his commission of one-third, took his share of the money as the seller, 
Then he took possession of the donkey as the buyer. The donkey was worth perhaps twenty gold pieces. So he was out of pocket, but he had bought a donkey of whose merits, as he now realized, he had been ignorant until they had been so glowingly portrayed by the town auctioneer. I never miss a bargain, said Nasruddin to himself, as he walked home with his prize. The Omen That Worked A thief was stealing Nasruddin's cloak. By coincidence, at that very moment, his donkey started to bray. Nasruddin was exultant and started to shout, A marvellous omen! Good news! Safety follows an ass's braying! The thief was so alarmed at this noise that he dropped the cloak and fled. The Change From his childhood, Nasruddin was known as Contrary. His family had become so used to this habit of his that they always told him to do the opposite of what they wanted him to do. On his fourteenth birthday, Nasruddin and his father were taking a donkey load of flour to market. As dawn broke, they were crossing a rickety rope bridge, and the load began to slip. A quick, Nasruddin, his father shouted. Heave up the load on the left, otherwise the flour will be lost. Nasruddin immediately raised the left-hand sack on the donkey. The whole lot of flour was unbalanced as a result and fell into the torrent below. Ridiculous fool, said his father. Don't you always go by contraries? Did I not specify the left-hand load, meaning the right? Yes, father, but I am now fourteen years old. As from dawn to day, I am considered to be a rational adult, and therefore I am complying with your orders. The Value of a Desire Nasruddin had a buffalo whose horns were very wide apart. He had often thought that if he could mount between them, it would be just like sitting on a throne. One day the animal sat down near him, and he simply had to sit between the horns. He could not resist the temptation. The buffalo immediately stood up and tossed him. His wife, finding him lying on the ground stunned, began to cry. Weep not, said the mullah as he came round. I have had my suffering, but at least I have also attained my desire. When to Worry Nasruddin's donkey was lost. Everyone helped him to search the neighbourhood. Someone said, You don't seem at all worried. You realise, do you not, that your donkey may never be found? Nasruddin said, You see that hill yonder? Nobody has looked there yet. If they don't find it there, then I'll start worrying. This podcast is copyright 2016, the Idris Shah Foundation.